Okay, in this video, we're going to draw the buildings uh, of our cityscape here. So let's, uh, let's do some planning on some paper and talk about how this is going to happen. So we want to create a building that is fully filled in with color. And there's really no good way to do that um, because if you, uh, if you take a pin and you increase your pin width, uh, what's going to happen is you're going to get rounded corners. And typically buildings don't have rounded corners. Um, at the base or at the top. So here's the plan. We're going to bring our turtle uh, right to this corner here and we're going to draw a line whatever the height is. And then we're going to go over one spot and draw another line and then draw another line and draw another line. So essentially we're just going to draw singular lines moving forward uh, with our turtle going from left to right from this coordinate point to this one. So I'm just going to make up some numbers to start with. Let's go 50 here and let's do 100 and let's start at a value of 300 and let's just make it 100 tall. So this is going to be 100 for the height um, of this building. So the building is going to be 100 tall and the width is going to be 50 um, on this. So let's kind of plan that. Uh, we're going to use a for loop to go from 50 to 100 and then we're going to use the move forward command uh, to move forward 100 every time starting at a y value of 300. So let's give that a, a go here. Um, again, we can just get rid of the clouds, we can get rid of the birds because we know those work. And there's our fresh background. Um, we're going to do a pin up. We're going to do a move to and we're going to move to 50 and then 300. We're going to do a pin color of black. So that's going to be 0, 0, 0. And then we're going to do a pin down. We're going to do a turn to. So I'm going to do that up here with the move to. And then we're going to do a move forward for 100. And now let's test our code here. And there you go. There's our first line for this. Um, I'm going to move over a spot. And then I'm going to move forward and move over a spot, move forward. So essentially this, um, I'm going to move this over to here. Um, in terms of order because really I want to do uh, move forward I'm going to do a pin up and then I'm going to repeat this um, set of commands using my for loop so I'm going to copy this cut it really and paste it into this space and now I'm going to go from 50 to 100 so it's very similar to what we did with our clouds um, and then we're going to use this I value, not image, the I value to iterate across there. So let's try it out. And there we go. Uh, there is our building. And really, this is drawing a rectangle. So that's kind of the important difference is, yes, this is a building, but this function right here that we're going to write is going to be used for the windows of the building. It's going to be used for the buildings themselves. Uh, really any rectangular piece on our um, program is going to use this function. So we're going to make it fairly universal um, when we create this. So we're going to create this function with parameters. Um, we're going to call this draw rectangle. And we're going to give it an x coordinate, a y coordinate, a width, and a height. And now, hopefully this will make sense when we do this. Um, in here, we're going to make all of these things variables inside of this. So I'm going to move all this in here as well. So this is kind of the setup part. So pin up, turn to, pin RGB. This is the color. Um, and actually, I want to do this um, I'm actually not going to do this in the function. Um, I'm going to do that outside of the function. 
so that I set the color and then I draw the rectangle that I want to make. So where's the x and y coordinates to start with? Well, here's your x coordinate is here. That's my beginning x. That's going to be the lower uh, left corner of my rectangle. And then the, this is the y coordinate of it. This is the height. So when I move forward, it draws the vertical line. And this value is the x coordinate plus the width. So if you think about it before, we had a 50 for our x and a 50 for our width, so it made this value 100. So we're essentially saying that we're going to start at x and we're going to go till x plus width with our i value. Every time we move forward, it's going to be the height. So this now allows us to draw a rectangle at a 50 x coordinate, the 300 y coordinate, a width of 50, and a height of 100. And this should give us the exact same black box, there it is, that we had before. But this now makes it very universal. If I want to make this at 250 and make it um, 100 wide and 200 tall, it's now going to put my building here. And you're like, well, this doesn't make, you know, doesn't help at all. Well, yes, it does. Um, this is fantastic. This rectangle function now can be used to draw our cityscape. So I'm not going to do the windows right now in the building. We'll do that um, in a little bit. But I'm going to create a, another function that's called draw building. And that is just going to do this right here. Okay. Now, I'm going to do some things with my draw building. Um, I'm, I'm going to um, draw a building at a certain x value. Um, and I'm going to put that right here at this x. But I want it to be a random building. So I'm going to do a random number for the width between 20 and 100. And I want the height to be random as well. So I'm going to do a random number for the height between, um, let's do 50 and 200. And then I'm going to delete these. And I'm going to say draw a building at x coordinate 0. And let's see what we get. And you can see, I get all these different sizes and shapes of buildings. Now, what if I wanted to draw another building? One maybe at 50, one at 150, one at 250, and one at 300. And I run that. You can see that it starts to create a skyline. Now, could I do these every 50 instead? So there's some more overlap. Well, let's try it. So we got 150. Maybe 200. 250. We've got 300. And that's really all we need. Oh, they're all skinny there, so you didn't have much overlap. And now you might be saying, why does it look like this? Why, is some, why are some of them darker than the other? Well, when our pen is drawing those lines, um, it's actually interesting that um, if you go over it a couple times, it'll be darker than if you just go over it once. Um, so there's a couple things we could do here. Um, in our draw rectangle, uh, where's our draw rectangle? Right here. 
we can actually do this for loop twice. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it so that it actually does the for loop two times. And I think the buildings will be darker. Yeah, see how it goes over it twice? Now the buildings are darker all the way through. Now, I don't know if I like this overlap. See how it kind of overlaps each other on that? Um, I'm not a huge fan of that currently. Um, so when I draw the building and I do this, um, this random number is generated uh, is the width and that's generated in this draw building function. If I want to draw multiple buildings I don't want that random number to be generated there. I want to tell it what width to draw the building so that I could then move over this next one will be the width um, or the original buildings um, X value plus its width before it starts drawing the next one. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's go back to the paper. So when it draws a building, it's randomly deciding what the width of that building is going to be. I want to store that as a variable and pass it and say draw this particular width of building. Then the next building I draw, let's say that this right here is zero. The next building I draw, I want to start at this X coordinate, which is the width plus this X coordinate. So if my first one was at zero, this one's going to be at width. And then it's going to draw another building. And then I want it to randomly select a width. And then I want it to move over the previous width. And I want to draw another building. Okay, so let's actually draw some buildings now using uh, that variable. So here our draw building, instead of doing this, um, we're going to put that as a parameter uh, for the width. So we're going to change this. We're going to cut this out of here. I'm going to paste it here. And then I'm going to put in the word width in this position. And I'm going to do a var a building width equals a random number. Perfect. So, where am I going to start uh, this building at? So there's a couple ways I could draw these. First building I'm going to draw here with a building width. And then I'm going to do another variable that's the building x value. And I'm going to start it at zero. So this is going to be building x, building width. So let's try this. So I'm going to reset. I'm going to run. So that runs just the same. Now, if I want to draw a second building there, building x is going to get building x plus the building width that was before. So there's an easier way to do that. It's using the plus equals command. So what this does is it now increments building X. So when I draw another building, this one's actually going to be the same width, but you'll see it's going to be right next to this one. It should be. Okay, there we go. So it's the same width, but it's a different height. Okay. So this is going to give us, now if I did the same thing, so if I just copied and pasted this, let's copy and paste, copy and paste, and now you can see that I can make multiple buildings, but they're all the same width. And I don't want that, that looks, you know, too, too cookie cutter. So what we can do, instead of doing that, is now we can actually do another random. Then we could do another draw building. And now let's see what happens. So now we have two different widths. You can see that. There's one width, there's another, and two different heights. And now what happens if you copy all of that? So now we do this whole thing. Copy, paste, paste, paste. So now we should have four